Hi, my name is Robert Hardy and I am the Operations Director of the Customs Clearance Consortium. I'd like to talk to you today, if I may, about Brexit and the changes which are on the horizon and what you can do to prepare for those changes. I think we should be clear, from a government's point of view, Brexit is already done and the transition period is now in place so that we can use that time to agree our future relationship with the EU and how that will work in practice. The government has said quite clearly since uh, from the outset that they would not extend the transition period beyond the end of uh, December 2020 and therefore we were bracing ourselves and are bracing ourselves for paperwork to start from January 2021. That said, those statements were made before COVID-19 appeared on the scene and obviously that is uh, likely to delay things in a way that nobody could have predicted. The uh, government are still saying right at the moment that there is no extension planned. Um, one of the reasons for this is they don't need to make a, a statement yet. They have until the end of June 2020 to request any extension uh, to the transition period uh, and they're likely to use that period, uh, the period between now and June 2020 to uh, to uh, assess the situation to see if, if an extension is needed and if and if so, how long. Um, I think if anything, there may be a request for an extension for the period that has been disabled by COVID-19, um, but I'm not expecting to see an extension that is beyond a year or, or even a year in that case, but uh, we have to watch this space. COVID-19 is still uh, waiting to reach its peak in the UK. From the consortium's point of view, we have um, we have been preparing for day one for two years now. Uh, day one keeps moving and uh, has moved again, uh, although right now it is January 2021. Um, so we have been charged with the responsibility of making sure that uh, on behalf of our members and our clients that we make sure that the processes are in place to make that transition to the new way of working as smooth as physically possible. So we spent two years doing that and that's all we do. This is our day job. We do nothing else other than prepare for Brexit. Um, that's meant that we can build the, the pieces that are needed. Um, we now have all of the platforms there um, and have tested those. And we're now in a situation where we're ready for data. We're ready to populate the system with data. So the more we can do now, the easier life will be on day one. And this is precisely where you come in. We've broken the entire customs and border process into two main streams. One is the master data, the kind of repetitive information of EORI numbers, consignees, consignors, the relationship between them, the products, the commodity codes, and so on and so forth. That to us is the master data. And then what we have, and that can be stored and, and ready for day one. And then what we have is the transaction data, which is the actual load data, which will change well, not always change, but in most cases will change as uh, on a daily basis as the load is loaded and whatever goes on that trailer is reported to us. So what we'd really like you to do is to go to mybrexit.uk slash data um, and follow the instructions on there. That gives you the, the opportunity to submit your information in a very soft and uh, quite tutorial way. Uh, and also to submit your um, product and origin data. Origin becomes very important to us. Uh, and therefore it needs to be important to you. So we ask you the questions in order to focus your mind on that, uh, that topic. Once we have your data, uh, we verify the information that you've given us. That's with us making sure that your EORA number is appearing in the right place, that it is registered on the European system, so on and so forth. Um, and that you are, if you are registered on traces that you're or that if you have uh, products of animal origin that you are actually correctly registered on traces whether you have IPAS registration so on and so forth so we make sure all of the boxes in the background are ticked and then we start to fill in the blanks and the blanks for us is the for example the box 44 coding which is a uh, little known uh, but enormous part of a customs entry which is uh, the sort of additional information codes which are associated to the uh, origin and uh, commodity code of the product so it's a big part with that where we start to draw the relationships and actually fill in any blanks. We may need to come back to you on some things, but on the whole, uh, we can do most of the work ourselves. Uh, we then submit test entries so that once we have uh, verified that what we think to be the right codings, we'll transmit it. We'll transmit customs entries to make sure that uh, customs agree with us. Basically, once we have the uh, data verified and and tested, it's locked into the master data suite, 
um, ready for transactions to start. The master data is a fundamental cornerstone of how this works because there, there is probably at least half of a customs entry is, is a repetitive half that shouldn't come as any surprise. Uh, it's only the other half, the item information, which is actually relevant to that particular movement of freight. So it's very important that we have all of that background information ready so that we're not trying to make that on the fly when trucks are moving. That said, once we've actually, you've actually given us the information that we require um, and we can start to build that file, it doesn't stop there. You must keep us informed. And if you introduce a, a new product, make sure we're aware of that new product. There can be no sudden surprises. Um, I know we've come across this before in an operation when we're picking and packing and suddenly the goods in is a product we've never heard of before. That can't happen in a customs environment. Well, it can, but it will be delayed. And uh, there is really no reason to delay something if there's a bit of forethought. So always make sure that if a product is on the move, we, we as the customs partner know that it's on the move. We know what that product is, what origin it is, what commodity code it is, and we've worked out some of the basic coding in the background that we will use on a transactional level. Master data to us is absolutely key and is the reason why we're contacting you now uh, because we don't want to be making these files uh, at the 11th hour. So what are we going to do with this master data? Well, we're going to validate it, we're going to record it, and we're going to get ready. What we're also going to do is uh, issue you with a CCC VIP code. Now, what that means is that your master data has already been checked by us, uh, has been stored by us, and has been validated by test entries and what have you. And we've given you a, a VIP code that allows you to interact with us um, in a much simplified way. Now, what that means is you will get fast track access to our customs processes. Large chunks of this are actually automated uh, and the response times are therefore in minutes. So customs information received to us where you're dependent on the return of a customs code um, is, is counted in minutes, not hours. So, But that's only for CCC VIP members who, because they've uh, loaded the master data in advance. Uh, also, because we're able to automate, we can uh, therefore uh, reduce our fees. Uh, so the... Uh, the lodgement of master data, once it's verified, um, gives you fast track access to what we do and cheaper uh, rates for the work that we carry out. So on the whole, seems like a sensible move to me, hence the reason why we built the frame. Also, once, you've, once we've issued you with the CCC VIP code, um, basically you're now Brexit ready. Um, this is the point when you can, to a degree, put your feet up and wait for day one. I think we should still do some documentation trials, but on the whole, with once the master data is stored and the relationships have been created at our end, um, you're about 90% of the way there. Um, and that's really our point of this presentation, is it might not be quite as complicated or quite as difficult a task as some people fear. It's the unknown that is always the most fearful part. So in this concept, you give us the data, we create the CCC VIP codes, you have that code, providing you keep us up, with, up to date with new products, then you, we can sit there relatively comfortable that Brexit planning is, uh, is in a good place. So once master data is in place um, and constantly updated by new products, I think we made that point, um, then we're ready for day one. And now let's say we have a consignment on the move, that could be a trailer, a package, whatever. Um, we need you to send us that load data, that information for that transaction. We've, we've put at the top of this slide that day one, everything starts, or st sorry, starts with an export. That's because everything starts with an export. It's very easy to look from an import side of, uh, of the channel and say, well, what am I going to do about my imports? But everything starts with an export. The first movement in any international movement is the export movement. And that's the, that's the, um, the first step that will generate the data which becomes... Uh, so useful in what we do next. So an export is taking place either from you or to you uh, and that data needs to come across to us. It can come across to us in a very simplified format um, because we're, we're holding a lot of the master data already. We know your product codes and corresponding commodity codes. We know what the origins of those product codes are and so on and so forth. We know the URI number of your supplier or your customer and so on and so forth. So the data that you supply to us in a very sim simplified streamlined format passes through our master data filter, which uh, populates the bits that are missing or validates that they have some of the information against the standing data that we have. And our system then starts to create the required documents. 
Now that's also an interesting topic because the required documents, people think, well, that was just a customs entry. So if I learn how to do customs entries, that's me doing the required documents. Uh, it's not as simple as that. The document pack that's required depends on the routing of the truck, not only the direction of the of travel, whether that's from France to the UK, UK to Ireland, Ireland to France, so on and so forth, but even down to what route that vehicle will take and where the documentation needs to be. That said, once you're aware of what those routings are, the process can be followed fairly, fairly simply, really. That's exactly what we do and exactly what we're programming the automation to do. So once the information comes into us, um, we start to spring into life. We create a, an EAD, an export declaration, which creates a, an MRN, a movement reference number. That's it in its simplest terms. Uh, the, the data is now starting to be sliced and diced. We may require a transit document, in which case a TAD, a transit accompanying document, is created and a new MRN is created. We also have to inform the border, so an exit safety and security declaration is lodged at the relevant port of exit, that is. And then, of course, if, if there's an exit, there must be an entry. Uh, and we therefore have to raise the ENS, the entry summary declaration, at the arrival port. All of this has to be done within certain time frames. Uh, there is then also the job to do to round the job off, if you like, with an import declaration, no matter which country that's in. If there is an export somewhere, there's an import somewhere else, in simple terms. So the import entry also has to be created. Uh, that creates an entry number, uh, an, an entry number, sorry, an ENO, which is shared with the client, and also a duty liability, which we um, share in advance, really, because there's a lot of cases where the entry is pre-lodged. Uh, the final duty might not be known until the entry is technically arrived, but uh, in some cases, if you're a freight forwarder, it's important to know what that duty liability is from the outset in case you need to collect payment. We also, in the background, create a traces entry. If, if one is required, we inform the, the BCP, which is uh, the new name for the BIP, the Border Inspection Post, um, so that the, they are alerted of your arrival if you're carrying goods with health certification or phytosanitary certification. Uh, and we also update IPAFs, which is the UK version of traces, for want of a better expression. All of that from the initial set of data. So one data, multiple processes, is a big part of what we're, uh, how we're driving this. And the more centralised that process is, <clears throat> the more data elements can hang off, or sorry, the more processes can hang off that initial data element. Um, hence the reason why we have that, uh, that one slice of data there has created multiple functions. Now, obviously, if you're a CCC VIP member, uh, that also means that happens a lot faster because uh, some of the information that we require, which is repetitive, the consignee, consignor, for example, uh, we already have on file and we don't need to keep asking you. Um, if you're not, then the automation trips over and we go to manual, which is a slower process. So what might that look like um, at your end? Well, first of all, you've got goods which are in your warehouse or you've been or have been produced or whatever they've ended up in storage and you have a consignment which is selected for for export um the old the old way of working would be to call the transport company get the transport company in, get them to collect the goods and so on and so forth um the dangerous new way of working is to do exactly that again and once the vehicle's in then you start to panic about the customs paperwork don't do that you need to roll that all the way back so that the at the time when you're creating an export order, if you like, uh, you're informing your customs partner, for example, the Customs Clearance Consortium, that uh, an export declaration is required. We then form that export declaration, send you back the, um, the MRN, the movement reference number, and only at that point, really, does the trailer become involved, and the trailer should only collect the goods um, which have got an MRN. There's, there's an expression we use quite a lot is that to transport companies who, is do not start a journey unless you know that journey can finish. Uh, there's no good picking goods up if you're just going to be delayed at a border. So only collect goods that you know can make it to their destination and have the processes in place for that to be there. So if you have an MRN and a movement reference number, the goods can be collected and loaded to the truck. Uh, whilst that's going on in the background with the truck confirmations, the border alerts have been done. The vehicle is on its way and is border ready and should not uh, encounter any significant delays at the border. Okay, so there may be some traffic issues getting to the border, but on the whole, um, we can get you through it pretty quickly, providing you can get yourself to it in the first place. Now, in order to assist you with your planning and prep and integration, and also to get IT involved, we've uh, we've written this up into a, a full kind of definitive guide, if you like, of how to interact with the Customs Clearance Consortium. 
uh, how, what data we require in the, at the front end, what data we require transactionally, what authorizations we require in order to act on your behalf, and what, uh, under what terms and conditions we operate. Um, this document is all available in the download section of mybrexit.uk. Uh, we'd recommend that you go there and, and we've, we've made the button very clear. It's the top left button when you go in, you can't miss it. Uh, it also includes in, in that document the data specification for, uh, for, the, for the information we require on a transaction level. Um, we, we, we get asked this question quite a lot by people saying, well, you know, what data do you require and how can we get it to you? We've made it as simple as we can with the automation at our end rather than your end and the integration more at our end than your end. Um, and what we have given you, though, is a definition of what that data file needs to look like in terms of content. So we were, that's included in that document. Uh, and also we've included a uh, route and process mapping tool, which is the link to that is within the document when you download it. Um, that will actually help to explain to you, depending on which way the truck is routed as to what documentation is required, and more importantly, where it's required. So the purpose of this short presentation really was one to introduce you to the uh, to the user guide really, and we recommend that you download that because it does have a clear mapped out path of what you need to do. Um, the, we can't overstate the importance of the master data enough. It's important for us to know about deferment accounts, about INCO terms, about commodity codes, and about origins. Um, we need that information now. This can't. This type of information can't be made on the fly, really, when trucks are moving. And if we're sitting in October and November, and this information is not made, we are not in a good place if, if uh, Brexit comes at the end of December. Um, there is no need for us to delay. You have a lot of this information already, and if you haven't got a lot of a lot of this information, then this is at least focusing you on the things that are important right now. There's not many, but uh, but what we try to do is drill down as to, as to exactly what they are. Keep your focus. Keep working on those. Give us that information. Once we're at the level where we're giving you a CCC VIP number, then you know that you're. A large part of your Brexit prep in terms of customs and border processes uh, can be ticked off as done. We hope you found this useful. Please do go to the website, do download the guide. This is just an intro. The guide itself is about 15 pages. Sorry, quite a bit of legalese in there as well. Um, but I think it's uh, we spent a lot of time um, forming it so that you have a definitive guide. So uh, please download that and uh, thank you for dropping by. We're going to try and do some more videos uh, as this goes forward. We've also done one on Inco terms, which if you haven't looked up, I, I would. Um, thanks again.